Hey folks, it's St. Patrick's Day 2021 and it's 25 degrees here in the greenhouse. It's season two of Bosco's Garden. Welcome. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. So starting off this year, we've planted a mixture of fruit trees and support trees down along the road in the side paddock. After careful planning, I chose the north side so they will get plenty of sun without creating shade in any other part of the garden. This is accompanied by the pond I dug last September. I've chosen not to use pond liner on this one as I want to make it as natural as possible. It is currently holding a decent amount of water, even in this dry period, and all throughout the winter it has never dried out completely. I will be getting ducks very soon, which is what this net fence is for, and they should help to compact the clay with their flat feet. I also have the rainwater I am harvesting from the shed roof to go in if I need it during the summer. There's lots of planting to be done here and a lot of materials to be mulched with some logs left for habitat. This is only the beginning of something I've wanted to get started on for many years and that is to create an edible forest garden or temperate food forest based on the work of Martin Crawford, David Jack, Sepp Holzer and Robert Hart to name but a few. So far it is merely a mixture of trees which I have mulched with cardboard, compost and wood chip. But the plan is over time to create a diverse, multi-layered woods with canopy trees, dwarf trees, shrubs, perennial herbs, climbing plants and root crops that supports and is supported by wildlife while also producing food, medicines and firewood from the willow and hazel which I intend to coppice. Is that a bit much to swallow at once? Here, have a look at the donkeys. So next up, while dad is sticking with tractor and tiller for the spuds this year, which we're still eating from last year by the way, I'll be going fully no dig this year for everything else. That's right, no dig. I seem to get a lot of raised eyebrows when I tell people about this, so I'll briefly explain. No dig veg gardening is far from experimental at this stage and has made great leaps and bounds over the past few years being popularised in temperate climates by people like Charles Dowding and Richard Perkins. The idea is to instead of digging the soil and creating bare beds of sifted topsoil which brings to the surface dormant weeds and upsets everything which is living in the soil, to instead apply a well rotted mulch on top of the soil to protect it from being baked by the sun, suppress weeds and feed the microorganisms living in the soil which are necessary for plants to make use of the nutrients. The idea is to instead of feeding the plants, to feed the soil and build fertility. This is how natural systems work and is a far more sustainable way of growing food. To start with this, I have made 20 75 cm by 5 m beds using a mixture of cardboard and paper as a sheet mulch to suppress the weeds and a thick layer of compost on top which will act as a growing medium while also feeding the soil below. I've also planted a long bed beside the chicken wire with an assortment of care dependent berry bushes. This will allow me to easily cover them with frost fleece and bird netting should they need it. The hardier bushes will be going into the food forest where they will mostly have to fend for themselves. Anyway, that's enough on that for now. Here's Chippy who hatched from an egg under a broody hen here last year. <laughs> 
So going into the shady part of the garden now, where the pond that we dug last May is doing great. There are no pumps and only pond plants and there is still no algae problems. The birds love bathing in it and it is home to a countless variety of insect species. This pond was made with liner and you can see a video of the process by clicking the link above. Around the pond we have a few insect habitats and we are in the process of planting more perennial herbs and wildflowers since it was a bit too shady for annual veg to do well here last year. This part of the garden is close to the house but also fenced off from the dogs so it is best for culinary herbs as well as being a good place to relax and observe the wildlife that comes and goes. Having a pond in the garden has changed the feel of it more than I ever could have imagined. There's something about the shimmer of light on still water that is just good for the soul. There is very little happening in the polytunnel so far except for the remnants of some winter greens I planted last September and have only recently started bolting after many months of harvests. Behind the polytunnel is also a mess at the moment, but I plan to put another four no-dig beds here for shade-loving plants and Asian greens during the midsummer. Then last but not least is my new lean-to greenhouse which I built last August. It is 11 meters long and 2.5 meters wide with a stable door and five windows. It is 100% self-built and I'm extremely proud of how it turned out. On a sunny day in March it can be 14 degrees outside and 25 inside with the windows open and it could get up to even 40 if the windows are closed. I have one tap hooked up to two 1000 litre IBC tanks collecting rainwater from the roofs and the other tap is coming from the well. If I connect these two taps with a hose and turn off the well I can gravity feed rainwater all the way down the field and into the pond in the food forest. The greenhouse is my new favourite place on the planet to have a coffee in the morning or a beer in the evening. There's so many things growing and germinating in modules and pots here that it will be faster just to list them at the bottom of the screen. My oldest avocado is now almost two years old. It got hit badly by the minus six frost in January, but I trimmed back the bad leaves and it is starting to put out new shoots. Two others died completely and the two here were barely affected. So it just goes to show the difference in the hardiness of seeds. At least now I know that these two hardies can survive in this position in the worst frost Irish weather is likely to throw at them. I also just planted an eating grape and a kiwi which I plan to train in a spalier along the back wall. So thanks a lot for stopping by, we have plenty planned for over the next few months and be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more. Cheers! As well as other projects we plan to showcase around Ireland over the next while, we will be paying very close attention to a new project which is just starting on the outskirts of Kilkenny City. They call themselves Cran Nua and they will be focusing mainly on no-dig market gardening, pasture-raised chickens and bees just to get started. We should have an episode or two based on their progress over the next few months, so stay tuned!